uh, at least uh, partially the book of Matthew over the next months. And I'm up here and uh, we're going to look at this book and I'll have to tell you the, the hardest thing to do in preaching the book of Matthew may be chapter 1 because all there are are a bunch of names. But we're going to look at the names this morning. We're going to take a gander at the names and, and see uh, how this book fits in uh, to God's plan for each one of us. If you would start in Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 uh, through uh, one through uh, 17. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez, and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Ram, and Ram the father of Aminadab, and Aminadab the father of Nashon, and Nashon the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David the king. And David was the father of Solomon, by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asaph, and Asaph the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzzah, or Uzziah, and Uzziah the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Amos, and Amos the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Je Jeconiah, and, uh, and his brothers, at the time of the de deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shetiel, and Shetiel was the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel was the father of Ab 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 Abihud, and Abihud was the father of Elikam, and Elikam was the father of Azor, and Azor was the father of Zadok, and Zadok was the father of Achim, and Achim the father of Eliud, and Eliud the father of Eliezer, and Eliezer the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Christ. So all the generations of Abraham to David were fourteen generations, and from David to de uh, the deportation to Babylon, fourteen generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the, to the Christ, 14 generations. Amen. Would you pray with me? <laughs> Most gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that as we look at this passage this morning, that you in your divine providence and in the power of your Spirit would help us to see how the start of Matthew and how the lineage of Jesus even this Thanksgiving and this Christmas affirms to us the power and truthfulness of the gospel of our Lord. Father, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm thankful I'm through reading it. It's always difficult when you come to names in the Bible, isn't it? What do we do? We tend to what? Skip over them, right? We tend not to look at them very long or ponder them very much because we probably think we already know all there is to know about them. We want to get to the good stuff. There are a lot of things that are more interesting than just the reading of people's lineages. I mean, so what? Okay, their names, their people. But the story of the gospel is about the story of history. And the story of history is about the lives of people. And that God has been unfolding His plan like a flower unfolds throughout history in one way. We see in the gospel of Matthew that there has been one way of salvation for His people. 
We see in the Gospel of Matthew and through the generations in the Gospel of Matthew, people that struggled in their rebellion against God. We see people who were obedient to God. We see people of all sorts and walks of life with God. You see, the Gospel is like a set of train tracks. The train tracks never change. We understand those train tracks better maybe today than we did uh, maybe when we first received Jesus Christ as our Lord. But those train tracks are the same train tracks that Abraham believed in. It's the same gospel that David hoped for. It's the same gospel that uh, Uriah and uh, Hezekiah and Zerubbabel believed in their Lord in. Today, of course, we have the New Testament and the greatness of the King that the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 that in the past, God revealed Himself in, in many forms and in many ways through the prophets and apostles. But in these last days, God has re re revealed Himself in the person of Jesus Christ, period. Jesus is the culmination of all the Old Testament promises. All of them. He is the fulfiller of the promises that were made by God through people like Moses and Aaron and people like uh, Jonathan and David and all the kings and all the people that were promising what God would be doing in this life. You see, the gospel has never changed. Before the foundation of the world, Christ died for our sins. God has never gone to a plan B or a plan C or a plan D. From the moment of creation, from the fall of man, from Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 we read about the proto-euangelion or the proto-gospel that, that Jesus would bruise the serpent's head. Jesus did that on the cross. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you look at the Gospels, each of these Gospels write about the same person. They write about the same message. And they do so in their own style, in their own vocabulary. You see, the Gospel of Matthew is a definitely Hebraic gospel. It's a gospel written to people who are of Jewish descent. And much of the Bible is understood because there, it is written to people that have the worldview of Judaism or the worldview of, 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 of Jewish worship in their mindset, in their culture. And we come to the gospel and we look at it and sometimes we don't understand the idioms and we don't understand the cultural background of it and it's so good to look at the gospel message again and again and again. I, I'm reminded, I was reminded this week because of the rain, you know it was raining a couple times this week. I hope you all enjoyed that, didn't you? Yes. Somewhat? Yes. Well, last yesterday, no, my wife's saying no, 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 no. We were over at the... Um, Nutcracker Boutique, and it, 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 it nearly, uh, how would I say, um, wiped out uh, some of the, the, the things on the outside and everything. Yesterday, I think they, they said they were able to save 27 uh, different um, vendors from moving them from the outside to the inside, which Anne and her mom got there, and she was one of those who was saved from the weather and the rain and the however it was yesterday and eventually we got everything packed up and moved out so the, the rain, I like rain but, but yesterday was a bad timing for it but, but I, I know that, that you need tracks to run on even when it's wet, especially when it's wet if you, if you, if you drive on the 91 at all or any freeway you'll probably notice there are grooves in the road, you ever notice that? You know what the grooves are there for? This is to keep make sure your tires stay on the road rather than hydroplane, which is very easy to do. My first experience in hydroplaning was in high school. 
I was coming out, I, I had my, my car, it was, a, it was a fantastic car, it was a 1974 AMC Hornet Sportabout hatchback. <laughs> Two door. I was coming out of the school parking lot. I had my tuba in the back. I played tuba in the marching band. Had the tuba in the back and I was with a friend of mine and I thought it would be cool to see how fast I could take a corner when it was raining. Well, I stepped on the pedal and my car took off faster than I could ever have believed it took off before. I mean, I was around that corner like that. And all of a sudden, my car started to slide. And all of a sudden, I was looking at the curb this way. And I turned my wheel back, and all of a sudden, I was looking at the curb this way. And I turned my wheel back, and I was going back and forth and back and forth. One of the things I learned during that is you don't put on the brakes when you're in a spin. And you don't really press the accelerator, you let off the accelerator and turn into the turn. Now, I didn't know that then. But by the grace of God, my engine died. <laughs> and I was sitting there and I got out of the car and I looked back and all the other kids that were coming out of high school had stopped their cars and were giving me an ovation. <laughs> It's important to lay down tracks when you look at the Bible so you don't skid all over the place. Because some people skid all over the place. I think the gospel is different here than here, and the gospel is different here than here. I'm, I'm here to tell you there is one gospel that has been given to us as stewards, as Paul says, of the grace of God. And that gospel was given to, to, to Adam. It was given to Noah. It was given to Abraham. And it is given to us so that we can rejoice in it. See, we have something really to be thankful for. We have not been dealt with according to our deeds. Each of the gospel writers portrays something a little different. Mark portrays Jesus as the servant. He says this in his book in Mark chapter 10 verse 45, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. Luke portrays Jesus as the Son of Man. And being a physician, he emphasizes Jesus' humanity. And he appeals to the Gentiles. John portrays Jesus as the Son of God. And more than any other gospel, he gives us insight into the humanity, not the humanity, but the deity of Jesus Christ, the Godhood of Jesus Christ. And Matthew, the book that we're looking at this morning and we'll be looking at, portrays Jesus Christ as the King of the Jews. It's filled with references of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. It's filled with references of, of a kingdom that has been established here in the world. And that there was a king coming that would be the king of all kings. 